Hey everyone, it's Yuka here and today we're talking about the Luna Display. Luna Display allows you to turn your iPad into a Mac display. So it's the same company that makes the app called AstroPad, which lets you mirror your Mac to your iPad. But the same company created a little hardware that allows you to make it into an actual second display. So when I learned that they're making Luna Display, I was pretty excited. And I actually backed their Kickstarter back in 2017 and it got shipped to me um, last summer actually in 2018. So it's been a while since I got the actual thing, but I've never had the chance to make a video about it. So I am doing it today. The reason that Luna Display gets me super excited is that it lets me turn my iPad into my dream iPad. If I could have anything on the iPad, I would just have the Mac OS be able to use a mouse, be able to use a keyboard uh, and the Apple Pencil, and that would be just like my dream in an iPad. I don't know if Apple will do that anytime soon, but in the meantime, if you have Luna Display, you can kind of get that experience with your iPad. If you ever used an external display with your Mac, it basically lets you do the same thing with your iPad. You can either do it plugged in with a wire or you can go wireless with your Wi-Fi. So some of the limitations with Luna Display is that you have to be in proximity to your Mac. So I can't just connect my Mac to my iPad and just take my iPad to a cafe or something without my iMac sitting here. Luna Display is a little device that has multiple options for what kind of connection you want to have. I have the USB-C version, but there are Thunderbolt version as well. In my previous video about the iPad Pro, which you can check out here, I do love it, but there are some limitations and some things that are not even Apple's fault. Like for example, because iPads are not as big of a platform than iPhones, a lot of developers are not creating robust apps only for iPad or even if there's a bug in the iPad version, it takes a lot longer to get fixed. So I even had trouble with the Twitter app, Google apps, like those are huge platforms. There are really, really great apps that are created only for the iPad and I love those. Like for example, Procreate is an amazing app um, that is exclusive on the iPad. I hope there will be many more of that. And then the other thing is some apps just don't exist for the iPad. Adobe has been creating mobile apps like Premiere Rush, which is a simplified version of Premiere Pro and Lightroom Mobile, which is a simplified mobile cloud version of Lightroom Classic. But there are a lot of limitations because it's just a simplified version. That's okay if you're on the go and for some cases, it's totally fine. Last year at Adobe Max, they announced that they will be creating a Photoshop for iPads. They have said that it's like a full-fledged version and not like a simplified version, but it hasn't come out yet. And I am hoping it will maybe this year. If I want to use Photoshop on my iPad with my Apple Pencil, I can do that today if I have the Luna display. Also, how many of you have wished that you could use a mouse with the iPad. If you use the iPad Pro for producing content or like writing, editing and stuff like that, instead of just consuming content, there are a lot of times that I think being able to use a mouse will be really helpful and will be able to boost my productivity. But we can't do that today with the iPad Pro or any iPads. But if I connect it to my Mac, I can use a mouse, which is pretty awesome. And then there are other things that the Macs can't do, but the iPads can. For example, of course, the Apple Pencil is not usable on Macs. At least for me, I'm not using a MacBook. I'm using my iMac, which is stationed right here. It's obviously not portable. So being able to move around in the house, um, work on the couch, work on my bed or whatever, um, it's pretty good. Change of scenery, <laughs> I guess. So for my use case, the main thing is if I want to draw in Photoshop, I want to do it on my Apple Pencil and I don't have like a Wacom tablet or a Cintiq. I'm not an illustrator, but sometimes I do want to draw something. On the thumbnail of my last video, I actually drew on the thumbnail and I did it on Photoshop connected to my iPad with an Apple Pencil with Luna Display. Sometimes I do photo editing 
on Lightroom or if I want to work in a different room, I can just take my iPad and go to my living room or bedroom and work there. What's a little confusing even for me was the difference between AstroPad and Luna Display. So AstroPad is a software only product that Astro HQ has and basically you install it in your iPad and Mac and that allows you to wirelessly connect and mirror your screen. But the limitation to that is that you can only mirror it's not like a second display, but it's just a mirrored display. With Luna Display, you can make it into a secondary display. However, keyboards on your iPad does not work with only Luna Display, which is very confusing. But if you have both Luna Display and AstroPad, you can pretty much make the most of it and use your smart folio on your iPad and a mouse that's connected to your Mac. And this will become like MacBook type thing. I will call out though that AstroPad is not a free app. There are multiple options for pricing. Um, I have the annual plan and it's not cheap. I don't think I am actually using the most of it, but I wanna try to do that more. And by sharing this tip with you, I hope that you guys will get more ideas or if you use it already, I would love to know how you use it and what you love about it. That's it for today. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I am uploading videos twice a week now, and I've been doing that for over a month now, which is so great, uh, consistency. <laughs> I usually upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays in California time. And yeah, I'd love to know what else you wanna see with AstroPad or anything else. So let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.